Welcome to our YouTube channel, the channel that provides value for your time and the problems which you are really looking for. Let's enjoy this journey of learning. Thank you. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we'll take up a very interesting equation to be solved. Most of my students these days are doing quadratic equations and absolute functions. And here we have a combination of both. So the equation to be solved here is x square minus 7 absolute value of x minus 8 equals to 0. I'd like you to pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Well, those of you who really want to understand and do extremely well, you may contact me on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. Our students are right there on the top. So another beautiful question which makes real difference in understanding concepts. So to solve this equation, let's try to approach the problem by understanding that we have two different type of attributes here. One is x square. The other one is absolute value of x. Now, we need to understand that x square will always be greater than or equal to 0. Right? It is positive. So, can we write x square as also equal to absolute value of x whole square? Yes, we can. Now, this is the tip which is required to solve this question. Perfect. So, now, once you have this strategy, you can again pause the video and then answer this particular question. Great. Now, let me write x square as equal to absolute value of x whole square. And then we have minus 7 absolute value of x minus 8 equals to 0. Now, this equation does look like quadratic equation, correct? Yes. Let me make another substitution. We'll write absolute value of x as some other variable. So, let this variable be p. Okay. So, we have written absolute value of x as p and for sure, absolute value of x square will then be p square. Makes sense, right? So, let's replace and write the equation now as p square minus 7p minus 8 equals to 0. See how we are developing a concept, understanding something which has never been told before, right? In classes, normally such things are not taught. So, welcome to our channel to get what most don't get. Yes, now it looks like a very simple quadratic equation. We could do product and sum, write down it in the factored form. So, minus 8 means I could do 8 times 1, minus 7 means 8 will be negative. So, we could factor this and write this as p minus 8 times p plus 1 equals to 0. Now, that gives you two solutions. One is p equals to 8 and the other one is p equals to minus 1. Great. So, we have two solutions, but they are in p, right? We want what? We want x. So, I'd like you to now pause the video and write down the correct answer because at this stage also, you can make a mistake. Let's try to understand what mistake you can make at this stage also, right? Very important question from any test point of view for higher level mathematics. Great. Now, understand one thing and that is that we define P as an absolute value, clear? It means that the value of P has to be greater than or equal to 0. It cannot be negative and therefore, this is the extraneous root, right? 
and the only solution which we should be working with is p equals to a does that make sense right yes now p is absolute value of x so we have absolute value of x as equal to 8 and therefore we can write x as equal to plus or minus 8 correct so that is how we are going to get the solution of this equation makes sense right well in case you would have just written here absolute value of x equals to minus 1 then also you would have seen for yourself that that really doesn't give you any solution so we have two solutions now one is plus 8 the other one is minus 8 i hope that makes sense feel free to write your comment share your views if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for your time and all the best